can't reiterate enough. Uh, I think that we are going to see very, very fast price appreciation through the end of this year. In 2017, Bitcoin went from $10,000 to $20,000 in 18 days as a blow off top. It would not surprise me to see something crazy like that happen before the end of the year. Wouldn't surprise me. Wouldn't surprise me at all. Not at all. That's what I've been actually calling for a while, that we're going to see a big, big, big exponential move for the rest of the year. We're going to be talking about that exponential move. Also, lots of exciting news today. I guess the first part of the exciting news is um, that we have Bitcoin breaking through 50,000. Uh, Fred's telling me, oh, Fred's telling me my mic is not plugged in properly. Uh -huh. Let me get that plugged in. Now you should me properly. So, the big news today, Bitcoin breaking through 50,000. That's exciting. But that's not that exciting. The fact that it broke through 50,000 without resistance, that's exciting. And the fact that um, the on-chain metrics say that we are heading for an exponential move in the rest of the year, that's exciting. Another thing that's exciting today, very exciting today, is this. Because this is no ordinary punk. This is a, a punk owned by none other than Visa. This punk is owned by Visa. I mean, I understand what we're looking at here. We're looking at a punk. Yeah, this is an institutional punk. Institutional ownership of a punk. Institutional ownership of a punk. Can you believe that? So a big, big, big show today. And we're going to be giving away cash because that's what we do. We give away cash to the community. So stay tuned until the end of the show. Welcome back, everyone. Stay tuned until the end of the show. What a day, what a day to be in crypto. Insane day today. We're going to be talking about why it's such an insane day to be in crypto and why I think that we are heading for an exponential end of year. Now, for those of you who don't know what I mean by exponential end of year, we need to, we need to really understand this concept today. So when you look at a chart that does this, let me show you an exponential chart. Exponential is a very interesting concept. Most of us can't understand exponential because the human brain doesn't understand or doesn't think exponentially, right? But this is effectively, let me go, that is what you call exponential. And that's when a chart does that and it goes exponentially upwards. So you can see that that's an exponential growth. And if you look at 2017, 2017, we had a small pump, uh, which seemed like a huge bull market at the time. Because, you see, that seemed like a bull market, which went all the way until June. But then in the big scheme of things, it actually meant nothing. And that's because of this whole concept of exponential. And crypto does exponential moves, and it always does them towards the end of the year. So if you look at 2013 again, you had that small pump, which at the time felt like an insane bull market. But then... It became exponential, and that, that first part of the bull market actually felt like nothing. And I think we're in for, exponen for an exponential end of year, and that's what I'm going to talk to you guys about today. So if you're new to our channel, welcome, welcome, welcome. If you, if you belong here, if you've been here for a while and you found your home, welcome back. Subscribe to our channel. Subscribe to our next channel or other channel, which is called Microdose. The reason why you want to subscribe to Microdose is because if you do subscribe to Microdose, I'm going to give you money. I'm going to just... Take these um, poly launcher tokens, $100 worth of poly launcher tokens, and I'm going to give it to you. Just give money to the community. They are now worth each one. Each one is worth $1,200 more or less. Imagine that, $1,200. Subscribe to both channels. Subscribe, subscribe to both channels. Join our community. Uh, be a part of the banter fam. This is the warmest, best place in the world. I mean, we change lives here every single day. We're changing another life. We're bringing a community member from Iran uh, to come and work with us because he can't do KYC there. He can't trade. And now dollar currency 21 is coming to South Africa. I had a chat to the, to the lawyers earlier. They're pretty confident that they can get him a visa, a work visa. So we're going to get him here pretty, pretty soon, pretty soon, pretty soon. Anyway, let's talk about the big story of the day. And that's Bitcoin and this exponential move and what an exponential move actually means. And I think by now... All the metrics are showing us that it's going to be a wild ride because 
not only are the charts showing it, but also the on-chain metrics are showing it. And it's important that you understand the concept of exponential, because I don't think many people understand the concept of exponential. The reason why people don't understand the concept of exponential is because the human brain, my brain, your brain, thinks linearly. So you think, when I say to you, think about taking 10 steps, you think one step plus another step. So it's like this, let me show you. So basically it's like this. So let me just make sure I don't, I don't have cables, right? But what happens is you go like this, you go one step, two steps, three steps, four steps, five steps, six steps, seven steps. And after 10 steps, effectively what you've done is you've only walked 10 steps, right? So let me just plug in a microphone here, but you've only walked 10 steps. And that's how the human brain is actually trained to think. Your, your brain thinks when you say something is 10 steps forward, you're thinking 10, call it 10 meters or 10 yards or 10 or 30 feet forward. That is what linear thinking is about. But what I've shown you here is that we're about to hit an exponential shift. Exponential is when the chart does that. And it did it in 2013 in the last bull market. And it did it in 2017, which was the last bull market. And you can kind of see that we're heading towards exponential all over again. And that's the part that, that's really exciting. Now, to help you guys understand the power of exponential, I actually did like a, a small spreadsheet for us. Um, Hopefully I can find it. Ah, there we go. I've got a great spreadsheet for us. So this shows you what happens when you take 10 steps exponentially. Let me zoom in and show you guys how exciting this is. So you can see that when you do something exponentially, your first step is one. Your second step is two. Then your next step is two times two, which is four. Then your next step is four times four, which is 16. Then your next step is 16 times 16, which is 256. Then your next step is 256 times 256, which is 65,536. And then the next step is 65,536 65, times 65,536. 65, and then you get to like 4 billion. And at the end of it, after taking 10, 10 steps exponentially, that's the number. I, I can't even, is that a, is that a Brazilian? That's a Brazilian, right? That's that's a real Brazilian. That's a yeah. So it's a not. It's past a gajillion. It's a Brazilian. No, it's a that's a Brazilian. It's definitely a Brazilian. So what I'm trying to show you guys is when we talk about exponential growth, your brain probably can't really understand what the word exponential growth actually means. But when you actually show it in a chart, like the chart that I showed you, or showed in a spreadsheet, then that is what exponential is. And I think when you look at the charts you really can see what exponential thinking is all about. To give an idea, when we were in 2017, and you look at the bottom price of Bitcoin, the bottom price of Bitcoin at the end of 2017 was, call it somewhere here, and it was about $455, or let's call it after the $455, $1,000. But then we went to $20,000. And so we had 20 times the price of Bitcoin. If you extrapolate that same thing to 2013, in fact, let's go to 2013 first, you had Bitcoin trading at $8, and then you got to a point where Bitcoin was trading at $800 or $1,000, which is 100 times the price. So in 2013, the price went up 100x. In 2017, the price went up 25 times, 25x. And now we are in 2021, and we're talking about real mass adoption and real money coming into Bitcoin. So if this is correct, it does look like we're going to get an exponential move in Bitcoin. And if we get an exponential move in Bitcoin, then, you know, 20, 20 times the price target is not far-fetched, but let's be conservative. 10 times where we're at today, also not far-fetched. Let's say, okay, worst case scenario, we get like a baby exponential. It's like five times what we get. Okay, Bitcoin goes to $250,000. Great, but then what happens to the altcoins? You see, that's the part that you need to be thinking about, what actually happens to the altcoins. So why am I so excited is a few things have actually happened to show me that this is growing exponentially. The first thing that I saw was Bitcoin smashed through $50,000 without any resistance, like zero resistance, like, like pew, no resistance. It's like, it's like a tent, but then there's no blanket. It's no resistance, absolutely no resistance. 
It's that's exactly it's a, a tent with no blanket. Um, then we also have this golden cross, which is imminent. And Sheldino, the Tentino, has done a little analysis exercise for us, uh, which we'll talk about in a sec, about what happens with this golden cross and how big this golden cross is. But this golden cross is big because if it wasn't big, then no one would talk about it as much. But it's huge. And when it does hit, all the institutions and the algorithms and the computers will all start buying or potentially start buying because they are set that that is like the bullish indicator. That's like a bullish, bullish indicator. Um, the on-chain metrics, which of course you always have to say like, what are the on-chain metrics doing and what are the charts doing? So we've looked at the charts, charts saying 50,000 no resistance and this golden cross is coming and the tentinator will show us in a second what the golden cross means. But then the, the on-chain metrics are like insane. So like the, the on-chain metrics are saying, I mean, have a look at this. So glass nodes, Cuts off the last seven days entity net growth. The algorithm recognizes new entities that later turn out to be existing ones. Um, so basically what Glassnodes is doing here is Glassnodes is taking the growth in new entities, which you can see is this orange line over here. Now look at what's happening to the growth of adoption of Bitcoin. In other words, new entities that have never been here before. Okay, this is what you call exponential, right? Like exponential, it goes up and then it goes up and then it goes up in a way that the human brain can't think. Just think of my spreadsheet with all those zeros, right? So we have exponential growth in accounts. And at the same time, I mean, where else is there a market where you have exponential growth? So more and more people are coming in quicker, like on Monday, there were two people that came in. On Tuesday, there were four people that came in. On Wednesday, there were eight people that came in or 16 people that came in. On Thursday, there were 256. Where else do you get exponential growth on the one side? But then on the other side, the people that are in and believe in Bitcoin don't want to sell their coins. So it's like, okay, more people coming. Think about if you have a, a party and in a party, you only got like X amount of booze, right? So you think like there's only five bottles of whiskey at the whole party. And the people who drink whiskey enjoy drinking whiskey and then just keep drinking more whiskey. At the same time, more and more people are coming to the party at a faster rate. So every hour, like one, one person, then two, then four, then 16. And then the people that are actually drinking whiskey are drinking more whiskey because they like whiskey. That's exactly what's going on here. So you have exponentially more people coming to the party, but the amount of whiskey stays the same and the people that were there first just keep drinking more whiskey. And that's exactly what's happening. So you've got this, like, this, this perfect storm of saying, people who are here for Bitcoin are here for the long term, or specifically the whales, the big buyers, but then more people are coming in very, very, very quickly. And some of them are actually gonna become these big whales and these big buyers. So, it's actually what happens next is the price just has to go up. And that is when a price starts to go up exponentially. And I know that because most of you are human, some of you are human, you don't understand how quickly exponentially happens. You know, and that is the beauty of this. So that's what's happening here. There is an exponential growth in Bitcoin that I think is about to happen. I may be wrong. Sometimes I am wrong. It's not often that I'm wrong, but when I am wrong, it happens, um, but that's exactly what, what, what's going on here. We're about to see exponential, and I don't think that any of us here in our brains can understand what exponential means. So that's what we've got to understand, exponential, exponential. We're going to be talking about exponential for a long time now because that's what it's all about. Let's get on Tentino. Tentino. Yo, yo. You spoke about the Golden Cross and what happens every time that there is a golden cross. In fact, before that, I saw you, I see your charts here. I see you, you, you got you, you're looking at a chart here. What yeah, chart is it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I see a chart on the screen here. Oh, Kucoin, yeah. buddy. Yeah. Kucoin, KCS from this morning. So yeah, I'm just putting stop losses at entry and letting this baby ride. You I'm called it earlier today, it. like what, 12 bucks or something? Yeah, as we broke out. 12.2 uh and then we also i saw um let's see uh, xtz as well breaking out and we're now starting so we're getting good we're getting good Oof, we're going well. Insane. well done well done well done all right let's quickly get into this so golden cross how significant is this golden cross 
Um, it's big, buddy. So obviously having a look, let's just get it out and we can see, there we go. So we can see, you know, I've basically highlighted one very key thing that was big is guys, we've only had three crosses in the last six years. So, so that is obviously a big thing, knowing higher time frame, a much bigger picture, you know, that has a big impact on the market. Um, and the main thing is that we always need to look out for that when we do approach a golden cross or any of these sort of zones is that we do hold the daily, the 200 daily moving average once we have crossed. Um, and we can see previously, as just before we started this massive run, we had the big golden cross over here. And as long as the trend held the, the, the 200 moving average, you could see how we have turned into a massive bull leg or bull run to the upward side. Uh, and then we had the one fake out where it was a little loop-de-loop. -loop, uh, and that's when we did not hold the 200-day moving average. So where we're getting, even before that, you can see the cross over there. You can see the massive growth that comes then afterwards and what it is. And I think, you know, I know personally a golden cross is a very lagging indicator. It's telling me something that's already happened. Um, you can see Bitcoin's pumping now, and now we're only starting to get a turn in there. But for the retail guys and for the rest of you, like you said, the bots, uh, the programs, uh, a lot of the retail investors, it's a massive, massive, massive deal. Um, and obviously just holding the 200 daily moving average is big. So I'm still very concerned that this was one leg. It was a starting leg, like you were saying, that small little start leg. Um, and I still think there was no blow off top here, but... And until we have that full blow off top where it happens really, really fast, um, that's what I'm seeing happening. Amazing. Listen, we got Crypto Burb in. And Crypto Burb yo, started yo. With, and <laughs> with a peanut. I don't know if you remember when he came on the show and he said, the peanut, he started the bull run. That was the beginning of the bull run. Remember that, Burb? <laughs> of course I do. Of course I do. That was the peanut of hope. That's the way we called it, you and I ran. And uh, that's, that's, how it, that's the way it went, yes. So where to from here? Are you, are you buying the fact that we could see an exponential uh, part of the, the, an exponential bull run next? Um, you know, in general, when I refer to the bull run, I mean the very same bull market that we've been on, that we've been in since 2018 floor, right? Uh, 3120. So uh, this bull run has not ended to me. Uh, to start with, I'm expecting and targeting, you know, hundred to uh, around hundred thousand dollars, like be it ninety or hundred twenty thousand dollars. You know, the higher we go, the bigger the volatility, the higher chances of overthrowing certain targets. You know, Bitcoin usually tends to like follow, you know, through and push more than we could expect, both in the upwards direction and go way beyond, you know, the, you know the the bearish expectations in the bear market. So. It tends to surprise us, and that's why my target being 90 to, 90 to 120 k, um, I wouldn't mind 150 or 20, 200 k. Okay, you know, you know what? You know, what? I kind of agree with you um, that on 100 k, 120 k. But the thing with 100 to 120 k, it doesn't make sense with any of the historical bull runs because the historical bull runs were all exponential in nature. So you can see, like the 2013 bull run was completely exponential in nature, right? And if, so this is, sorry, this is 2013. This is 2017 exponential in nature. Now, if we were to only get 100,000, that wouldn't make it very exponential. It would make it pretty linear. Like mm. it would be $10,000 a month from now, every month, $10,000 up. And then you get to, to, it doesn't make sense. Um. To be honest, you know, when you think about it, you know, from the holistic point of view, first of all, Bitcoin had 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 its years, you know, when when it was not performing specifically 100x. If I may actually share the screen, I, I can show you off very quickly. Do that. Uh, there, there was a. Uh, mm, let me show you to it. To, to it there's. Let me know when it's on. But there was a tweet. There was a tweet from oh. Charlie Bilello, right? Hopefully, it's yeah. Okay. And that was where Bitcoin returns ever since 2010. You know, there were only there have only been two years that Bitcoin was negative. 2018 of the bear market in 2014 of the bear market, right? That the bear market lasted for the entire year. You would have uh, 2014, you know, February when the empty ghost crash happened. You know, in, um, again, just as, as the year started, so it ended up with the with the floor somewhere around like 180 dollars uh, at the breaking through, you know, uh, transition from 2014 to 2015. And 2018, you know, gave you 73% because that, that was the year that the entire bear market lasted for. 
And uh, well, you would see 2019 or the biggest kind of like bull runs that you would see the very first one, uh, 99,000 per, oh, sorry, 9,900%. Uh, like it doesn't need to, the exponential refers to the growth and to the advancement, you know, of the, of the price. Like, just like you said, there is two, there is four, there is like, you know, it all multiplies, right? In the, in the chain. At the same time, when it refers to the, to the returns, I wouldn't, be necessarily like targeting that it needs to be like million x or ten thousand x or thousand x. For me, if you ask me, twenty x in a in a matter of two three years is well still incomparable with the traditional markets, right? If you will, yeah, I think so, it is exponential. Yeah. Okay, yeah. so so you you're thinking a hundred thousand? Do we go to forty thousand before we see a hundred thousand? Um. That is that is a good question. I actually have just covered you know all my thoughts in the free report, which is going to be released on Twitter. But um, you know, I do believe that in case of some unpredicted FUD, whenever it comes, you know, uh, like be it from the Fed or <laughs> be it from the Fed and be it from the uh, from the Afghanistan kind of like you know military exp like ex expansion or something, you know, we may see some flash crashes. Uh, but the, I wouldn't see, I wouldn't expect any sort of like 60 percent crash just the one we saw in the may right which was overextended because of the fat the only crashes the only dips that i would expect would be 10 20 percent from now on until we top out somewhere around like over 100k most likely okay Boop. thank you my friend i know you are today pushed on time so i'm not, I'm not going to keep you but i think we did I miss am. you we didn't we didn't see you for a while man yeah, you see our, happy our, to community be, be made, back. our community also made the the run version I love it. <laughs> I love it. We should do some competition about it. <laughs> I love it. Brother man, thank you. See you soon. Let me know anytime there's an update. See you soon. Cheers. Crypto Burb, the best Twitter game in the whole of the, the crypto universe. <laughs> and whoever made this, 10 out of 10, man. 10 out of 10. I don't know who made it, but Fred, whoever made it, give that man a bell. Yeah, I want to now. I want to just show you something here. Okay, so that is the exciting news of the day on Bitcoin, and Bitcoin is growing exponentially, and therefore we can maybe have an exponential growth uh, at the end of the year. And remember, we can't imagine exponential. Just think, just think all the zeros in that Brazilian that we spoke about. That's a big number. Um, but Bitcoin to me is not actually that exciting. I mean, it's exciting, but it's not as exciting as say ETH. ETH is much more exciting than Bitcoin right now. And ETH is not as exciting as I think Cardano. And Cardano is not as excited uh, as excited, exciting as Luna and Arweave and Rune and Matic. So it just depends on the level of excitement that you want. If you're conservative, then you can be a Bitcoin maximalist. And then that's exciting. But if you're not conservative, then you start looking beyond Bitcoin and you start realizing what real excitement is all about. Um, and like for me, real excitement is Cardano, it is Ethereum, it is Rune, it is Luna. And we're going to talk about all those things that actually make me excited. Bitcoin, great. We need Bitcoin to hold, but that's not the exciting part of this bull run. Unless you're a Bitcoin maximalist, then it's a very exciting run for you because that's all you get. You don't get anything else, but you just get Bitcoin which is exciting if you're a Bitcoin maximalist, but you don't get NFTs. And, you know, Bitcoin maximalists, when you hear of like MicroStrategy or Square putting Bitcoin on their balance sheet, that's exciting for them, right? But Visa, when they see this, they say, oh, okay, great, you're putting Bitcoin on your balance sheet, you're putting Ethereum on your balance sheet. L let me tell you what you're going to do. Hold my beer. And then Bit Visa, what they do is they go and buy a punk, and they put a punk on their balance sheet. They pay $160,000 for a punk. So now we have institutions buying a punk, a crypto punk, an NFT, and putting an NFT on their balance sheet, which is, I mean, today must be a, a turning point in the history of NFTs. And I'll show you why. Visa made this announcement, and they said, over the last 60 years, Visa has built a collection of historic commerce artifacts from early paper credit cards to zip zap machine today as we enter a new area today as we enter a new era of nft commerce 
Visa welcomes CryptoPunk 7610 to our collection. So as we enter a new era of NFT commerce, this is coming from the biggest payment provider in the world, one of the biggest payment providers in the world. And they've now put this punk on their balance sheet, punk number 7610, which they bought for 45 ETH, 46 ETH? 49.5 ETH. It's a turning point today. It's a real, 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 real turning point. And this just shows you the power of NFTs. NFTs, in my mind, are going to explode. We haven't even started um, what's going on in NFTs. And I want to show you some of the stats that are exciting me around NFTs. The first thing is that if we look at OpenSea, we all know OpenSea, which is probably the biggest crypto, uh, the biggest exchange right now. And OpenSea had a record 24-hour trading volume on Ethereum of 125 million USD. Cool, great, good for them. But on the other hand, you're also getting OpenSea burning more Ethereum on, on ultrasound.money or through EIP 1559, which is, you know, every time an ETH transaction goes through, some of the fees are burnt. But OpenSea is double, double the size, double the size of Uniswap. So you're kind of saying NFTs are double the size of, of DeFi. So now you've got Ethereum, which is like, you've got NFTs, which are double the size of DeFi. And then you've got DeFi, and at the same time with DeFi, DeFi is now at all-time highs again, and that's according to DeFi Llama. DeFi Llama is telling us that there is $160 billion locked up in DeFi, and that's the highest that it's ever been. It actually beats the April peak, which we had pre previously. So now you've got two of these massive industries which are exploding on Ethereum. You've got DeFi and you've got NFTs. DeFi is still very crypto. But NFTs is actually very much mainstream. Visa is very much mainstream. Um, uh, uh, it's got nothing to do with crypto. You, you don't really feel the, the need for a wallet. You don't have to be really smart financially. In fact, you can just play a video game, just play Axie Infinity, and that is exactly what's happening here. And it's not actually a video game. or It is a video game, but it's actually not a game. You need to put a Axie... Axie infinity into perspective and i have to share this with you guys because i think that it's an epiphany on how to value businesses today um if you look at axie infinity a lot of people are saying axie infinity must be overvalued and i want to show you something i want to show you why i actually think that axie infinity may still be one of the most undervalued tokens of our time of our generation never mind of our time and i'll show you why so let's look at what axie infinity's price is so the price of, Acti of Axie Infinity is right now, let's quickly look. Let's quickly look. Oh, wow, bad gateway. That means we're over capacity again. You see, even the, the servers, even the servers uh, can't keep up with Axie Infinity. Even, even, even the servers today can't keep up with, with, with what's going on. Okay, we'll get there in a second. But the, the, the market cap of Axie Infinity is, say, between 3 and $4 billion today. That sounds expensive. This is, it must be one of the top 10 protocols. In fact, we can check here. Um, let's quickly look at where it sits in the top 10. Okay, let's quickly go here, and you can understand this. And you can understand what I've seen that I don't think anybody else has seen yet, and that's why you tune into Banter. So Axie Infinity has a market cap of, I think it was about four or $5 billion. Um, let's have a look, let's have a look, let's have a look. Now it can't be less than $2 billion. Mm, here we go. Axie Infinity is $4.3 billion market cap. Sounds expensive, right? It does sound like, wow, a game with a $4.3 billion market cap in history. I think people are looking at this very wrong. I think people are looking at this very, 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 very wrong. And I think that the whole world is starting to wake up. I saw on the weekend that there was another person who woke up, and that is Ryan Wyatt. And he said, I'm so bullish on NFTs. I believe play to earn is the next major gaming model, as well as an open market for in-game digital items. Most in-game assets are illiquid, which is insane to me. All this will change long-term through blockchain, NFTs, 
it's self-evident. Great. Except that this Ryan White guy, this guy, Ryan White, see where he works quickly. Oh, head of gaming. For who? Oh, YouTube. Hmm. Nothing to see here. Move on. Move, move right along. Move, move right along. So the reason why I think that we haven't even started yet is because think about it this way. How many players are there today on Axie Infinity? Do you guys know how many players there are in Axie Infinity today? How many players? Let me show you. So Axie Infinity today has about 1.2 million daily active users. Okay, that is absolutely huge. It must be the biggest crypto app in the world if it's got 1.2 million active daily users. More exciting is how fast this chart is growing. So this chart is growing, as we said, exponentially. Remember that, that whole thing about growing exponentially. It means it's just growing faster and faster and faster and faster and faster. Cool. So it's valued right now at about uh, $4 billion. Just think about what Axie is. Axie is a video game. But in this video game, players earn money for playing the game. And in fact, they earn between $50 and $100 a day, which is above a living wage for most countries. Third world countries, Philippines. That's where Axie Infinity is exploding. Vietnam, that's where Axie Infinity is exploding, right? So, let's do some math. The two biggest employers in the world are Amazon and probably Walmart. And if you look at Walmart, Walmart employs worldwide about 2.3 million people. Okay, Walmart employs more than 2.3 million people. Let's call it 2.3 million people in the world. Which means that Walmart gives jobs to 2.3 million people. Amazon, on the other hand, gives jobs to 1 million people. Now, a company, when a company is set up, a company provides a good or a service to consumers and the returns of the company are for me measured on two axes. The first axis is what are the returns to shareholders? And the second axis is how many people are you feeding? What are the returns to employees? How much value you add to society is really the product and service that you provide and how many people you can provide work to, right? Okay, if that's the case, and we look at Axie Infinity, and then we say to ourselves, hold on a second, Axie Infinity is giving work to 1.2 million people. Now, let's halve that and say, let's say that only half of them are actually working or earn enough as a wage. Axie Infinity is giving work to 600,000 people. That makes Axie Infinity one of the most powerful employers in the entire world. And if you think that at a market capitalization of $4 billion, which by the way, by the way, by the way, is only at a price earnings ratio, I don't know if you know what a price earnings ratio means, but it's how you price um, usually shares or tokens. When you look at the price earnings ratio, the price earnings ratio of Axie is at about 4.48, which means that right now the price is 4.48 times the profits that Axie Infinity is distributing to its shareholders. So on those two metrics, I look at those two metrics and I say, hold on a second. You have a token that's trading at 4.48 times the money that the token is making, which is fucking cheap, okay? It is ridiculously, ridiculously cheap. In fact, maybe this tweet, here we go. Exactly what I was looking for. It's, it's cheaper than 0x Filecoin Curve, Hedge, Kaiba, Loopring, uh, Ethereum, Aave. It is actually the cheapest by a factor, by a huge factor. And, and on top of all that shit, it is now probably one of the biggest employers in the world because it provides jobs to more people than Amazon and nearly half the people that Walmart has been providing jobs to. And the only difference between that job and the job at Walmart is that in this job, people actually enjoy their job. And I don't know about you, I hate going to Walmart. I don't really mind shopping on Amazon, but I really love playing video games. And so that's where we see the trick here. NFTs are revolutionizing the world. They're revolutionizing, not the crypto world, but they're revolutionizing the whole world. And they're doing it in a way that no one notices. 
They're doing it in a fun way. When people play Axie, they don't think about the crypto experience. They think about how much fun it is to play Axie. And in doing that, Axie Infinity is bringing more jobs into the world than Amazon globally. And here, you don't need to send your CV to apply for it. It's actually a job that's open to anyone. If you can, if you can play the game or get some Axies or have internet, then you can work and you can earn money. And Axie Infinity is just the first game. And it's the first game which is built on Ethereum. You got it? You're starting to see what's happening on Ethereum? And then at the same time, the majority of DeFi is on Ethereum and DeFi has just hit an all-time high. And then you wonder why I'm much more excited on Ethereum than I am on Bitcoin. So yes, I'm excited about Bitcoin and this golden cross and whatever else, but actually I'm much more excited about Ethereum. You got it? And if I'm excited about Ethereum, then it's because of DeFi and NFTs. And if I'm excited about DeFi, then actually what I'm most excited about is Luna. Because DeFi on Luna is absolutely exploding, 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 exploding. Let me show you something here. So I picked up this. Is this the tweet or is, it, is there another tweet? No, there's a, there's a better tweet than this. I've got to find it for you. There we go. Here's the tweet for you guys. So this tweet is by some guy whose name is Thuvarakan. I'm going to try and pronounce it. Thuvarakan. Okay, funny name, but, but, but good guy, good guy, good guy. So he's done some work on Luna, and he says, Luna market cap has expanded four times from the bottom in May of 2 billion. Yes, we know that. The token has done closer to 5x. Now remember, Luna is a function of how many Terra the stablecoin is minted. To mint stablecoin, you've got to burn Luna. So as people start to use the stablecoin more, then you burn more and more and more Luna. But you burn them at an exponential rate. So the more UST that are created and needed, excuse me, needed or used, the more Luna gets burnt. The more Luna gets burnt, the less Luna there are in circulation. Therefore, number go up. My number goes straight up. Okay, so look at Luna. The market cap... If you look at the price to UST multiple, so in other words, take the price and divide it by the UST. It currently stands at 5x. Historically, historical 3x. The reason for higher multiple is due to, to UST listing on Coinbase. UST drew, grew by 15% from May. This can grow significantly with the listing at Coinbase. We feel lunar price appreciation can surprise many in the future. Why? Let's say there is a deposit of 3 billion to UST. At the current rate, we will burn 106 million, meaning only 7 million circulating supply. So you keep burning more and more and more Luna. So if we create 3 billion of Luna now, we will burn 106 million, meaning there'll only be 7 million Luna left in circulating supply. And then the price grows exponentially. And that's what most people don't understand, is that the more Terra you create, the more Luna you have to burn, the more Luna you burn, the price has to go up exponentially because of the circulating supply. And um, he says, yeah, UST is growing steadily lately with this momentum assigned 10 times multiple to present USD. Luna should trade at ideally $55, given an upside of 200%. Easy. But that's not exciting. He says, management of Luna earlier guided for 10 billion UST market cap, if I recall correctly. By the time we achieve this, Luna can go to $1,000. And this is true if you just take the amount of Luna in circulation. So you want to talk about exponential uh, tokens? That is, um, uh, here we go. He says, when you hold good project, you don't need to worry about Bitcoin price movement. Luna clearly outperformed Bitcoin here. It has all the characters to do it in the future as well. And that just shows you the performance of Luna against the performance of Bitcoin. And Luna's just started to grow exponentially exponentially the growth is exponentially everything is just growing exponentially everything is growing exponentially that's what i wanted to share with you guys i wanted to share a whole lot more but we're running out of time so what we'll do is we'll do the following we'll do a microdose and on that microdose i'll share a whole lot more stuff with you um i have a survey from deloitte's big survey from deloitte's basically in a nutshell the survey from deloitte says the banks are fucked completely. 
Okay, wait, I had a whole, a whole list of notes here that I made about this. Okay, so I made five points about this, uh, this Deloitte report. So the first point about the Deloitte report, and this is a real, a real report. I know you think I'm, I'm kidding, but I'm not kidding, actually. It's a real report, as you can see. Um, it's called The Future Belongs to Cryptocurrencies. Banks must embrace it, and that's according to a Deloitte survey. And there are five amazing outcomes from this Deloitte survey that everybody needs to know about. Very important. So I wrote them down for you in the paper. Get your pens and paper ready. And let me know when you've got your pen and paper ready. And we'll write down the five points. You've got to write these down. Okay, let me know you got it in the comments. While you have looking for pen and paper, let's give away money. If you've got, if you've got coin panel tomorrow, you can win 10,000 bucks. You'll see, I'm going to give away 10,000 bucks on coin panel. I'm going to give it away. So subscribe to coin panel. Um, yeah, let's give away some of these, these things. Trees green, go back to trees green. Trees green, we like trees green. Okay, trees green, we saw you, you win, you win. $100, with it, which is now worth $1,200. Okay, get your pen and paper ready. Let's quickly recap what's written in this Deloitte report. It says, the future belongs to cryptocurrencies. Banks must embrace it. And that's according to a Deloitte survey. Very, very, very important survey, which captures... It was done by Deloitte. It was all about banking. And I wrote down five points, which we must all write down right now on a piece of paper. And we'll talk about them on the Microdose show, which is going to happen a little bit after the show. So the first point that is important for you to note about the survey, very, very, very important point is the banks are fucked. So point number one, banks are fucked. Okay, so write that down. Banks are fucked. Point number one. Point number two, about the Deloitte survey, very important. Very important survey was done um, to over a thousand, it says over a thousand bank leaders. And these are the outcomes. The first one is they realize that the banks are fucked. More than 1,000 bank leaders. Okay, next point, next major outcome of the survey, banks have just realized how fucked they are. So the first point, banks are fucked and they have just realized how fucked they are. Point number two. Okay, so write that one down. Okay, next point from this Deloitte survey. Okay, again, done to more than a thousand bank leaders in the USA, UK, China. So it's actually internationally is banks are so fucked that they don't even know what to do anymore. So that's point number three. Okay, that's how fucked they are. They don't even know what to do with point number three. Point number four from this amazing survey is that they now realize that they're so fucked that they have to um, that they have to actually get onto blockchain. Yeah, and point number five is that they have to start buying NFTs and putting NFTs on their balance sheets. Okay, now, on a serious note, we'll see you guys again in a bit. Um, we'll see you guys again. We'll talk about my, in, on, on our microdose, which is the new show. Before we go, though, let's just check on what Sheldon's doing because Sheldon, I can see Sheldon's on the charts. I can see Sheldon you know, on the charts. I'm chilling, bro. I'm chilling. I saw there's a small correction from Bitcoin, so I'm just monitoring. If anything big happens, guys, I'll be doing a microdose too. Amazing. All right, guys, we love you madly. We will see you guys again uh, later on today. We will see you yeah, in a couple of minutes. We'll just do a microdose show. 10 minutes, microdose, crypto content, no side effects whatsoever. Well, oh, Freddie, Freddie, hold on. I want to get you. Can, can we get Freddie on the stream? So Freddie today, I've got to tell you something. He, he sold his cool cat, by, but by mistake. So he put this, he bought an NFT. He bought an NFT. Then he put the NFT, he loved the NFT, he nurtured it. He put the NFT on sale and he forgot that he put it on sale. And then someone bought it and he was like, shit, I didn't actually want to sell it. The interesting thing here is that he actually felt attached to the NFT. He came into the office this morning and he was crying. I was like, what happened? He said, I didn't even get to say goodbye. Someone just bought the NFT. He didn't even get to say goodbye. Freddie, how bad is it? Hold on, let's get Freddie on the stream. There we go. Unmute yourself, man. Cheap headphones. <laughs> I don't talk about it, man. I'm, 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 I
<laughs> no, but really, I walked in this morning. It was quite a polarizing moment. Sorry, let me just mute you. Having woken up to a fifty thousand dollar Bitcoin, only to go into my Gmail and get a notification from OpenSea that my favorite cool cat seven one three six had just been sold for a measly to Ethereum, which I thought was a good deal three weeks ago, but I've been ripped. I'm gutted. I'm not happy about it. I really, I've taken down all all the prices, and I'm not selling. I'm not fucking selling. Learn a few things now from this amazing conversation. We learn a few things. The first thing is humans are becoming attached to JPEGs. So a sign of the times, humans are becoming emotionally attached to JPEGs. We are so screwed. The next thing is you never, ever, ever put a sell offer that's so low. You put a sell offer in the sky. You want to put it like a, a wacky sell offer. Put it at Bitcoin at a million dollars. Maybe who knows? There'll be like slippage on an exchange. You'll get hit. You don't put it in a two ETH. What were you thinking? And now, how do you feel? Gutted. So buy it back. <laughs> All right, guys. Love you madly. See you guys later. Until then, use the after hashtag, after banter hashtag to discuss what's going on in the show. Um, remember to subscribe to Microdose because more money is being given away there. And that's our exit plan in the event that YouTube decide to take down our content. See you guys later. Until then, trade well, my friends. This is classic. Whoever made it deserves... This is brilliant. <laughs> <laughs>